me again it's uh, March 1st uh, and uh, I'm applauding I'm welcoming the spring I hate summer spring and autumn are my favorite times of the year but we know that March is not really a spring until it, it's April when it begins to kind of manifest itself but still congratulations to all of you with the uh, calendar spring and let's get to the sort of the sea trap and uh, the sit rep will start with this today. Um, it's huge. I cannot emphasize enough. What you see here is uh, yesterday's uh, um, federal uh, law, which was repealed and was signed by Mr. Putin. And this is about the fact that Russia severs all uh, basically uh, communications and cooperation with the uh, documents of the Council of Europe, including its manual, including its charter, and uh, especially human rights court and things of this nature. It's over. And it's so huge in itself. I cannot even emphasize enough how important it is. But yes, Russia is insulating itself from the basically sewer uh, like this, uh, which emanates from Europe. Something like this. If you look at actually um, this obvious in the United States, I, no, actually it's not. It is UK. Yeah, it's a drag queen told the class of 11 year olds in Isle of Man uh, schools that there were 73 genders and threw out one child who disagreed. So there you go, you know, uh, so there is nothing to really gain uh, except for the perversion and decomposition of the moral fabric of the society from communicating with Europe and very many Europeans, not all, but very many who share this uh, perversion woke culture and Russia did it. But this is not just it, which is of course still very important. As, uh, you can see yourself, we now have this situation, and this is just absolutely atrocious. And uh, again, uh, some woman started to say that something for us to certainly reflect on as we learn our history and think about it, said uh, the teacher uh, who is Muslim, and he, and nothing again with being, uh, nothing wrong with being Muslim, but she started uh, uh, talking about this Eva Jima thing, and of course uh, she started uh, uh, tying this together with the obviously shameful issue of the exile and basically putting uh, Japanese Americans uh, by Roosevelt administration uh, during the World War II in the so-called interned uh, camps. Yes, it is shameful, but what the hell it has to do with anything with uh, basically Iwo Jima, which was the great uh, and not mythological, very uh, uh, important uh, landmark victory for U.S. Marine Corps and U.S. Navy. I don't know. I don't know. But here we are. You see, we have people just basically... Uh, De de uh, destroying everything what, for example, was important for the United States. And again, make no mistake, those people died there for a reason. You know, so, but here we are, and that's the situation which Russia is now preventing from uh, contacting, you know, uh, people who do this in the what is called combined West and be that Europe or the United States. And these are just some examples. When you look at this, you can totally see a complete moral ethical collapse in the combined West. But this is not just it. Suddenly we have uh, another kind of wave of the, uh, how to put it, uh, real news starting uh, to penetrate this absolutely a uh, tight wall of the mainstream media in the West. And we can start with the Figaro. Well, one of the fr French generals, he's talking about that sending tanks and um, to Ukraine will not change the balance of uh, uh, power and may actually extend 
conflict or expanded uh, even that and uh, this was uh, the idea uh, a few days ago, uh, promoted by a former commandant of the uh, Foreign Legion, and uh, he is afraid that it will not change anything and that war might spread. Sure, there is a possibility of that, but I mean, come on, I mean, France is one of the champions of supplying Ukraine with all those tanks, or whatever they have, so, and they, France has to bear responsibilities, and any other people and governments, which, for example, blew up the Nord Stream 2, thus committing the act of the uh, state terrorism, all things of other nature, like supporting of the Nazi regime, basically, in Ukraine. And of course, uh, while doing this, they continue to impose all kinds of sanctions which are now really laughed at in Russia. And as you can see yourself, uh, that's uh, just, you know, cannot get any worse for them anymore. And um, yesterday they report again that Russia oil exports still strong despite sanctions. Russia crude oil producers managed to export 7.32 million barrels per day of crude oil and crude oil production in February. The data shows, and I, we've been through this before, that you cannot uh, impose the price cap uh, on uh, oil. You just can't. And Russians will continue to sell it, and there are many <clears throat> willing buyers who really desperately want Russian oil and other uh, natural resources, including gas, including li liquefied natural gas. And we can go on and on and on with coal and other minerals and other and gold. And that brings us, when speaking about gold, to this beautiful piece by my friend Larry Johnson, who is the CIA State Department counterterrorism professional. And here's what I want to say. He published a couple of days ago, when we begin to speak about why they cannot wrap their uh, minds around the whole situation with Ukraine, this wonderful piece. It's called Fool's Gold. Here Larry expands on the situation why basically United States and Western Europe cannot find their bow, uh, uh, you know, uh, ass with their both hands in the brightly lit room because obviously the intelligence quote unquote they get is absolutely fake. Here it is. He is talking about that. I have heard that Finnish intelligence being supplied to U.S. policy makers continues to declare that Russia is on the ropes and the economy is crumbling. Also, analysts insist that the Ukrainians are beating the Russians. And he uh, explains it. How can this be? The explanation is simple and shocking. The analysts are ignoring valid open source reporting and they are relying on liaison reports. The intelligence provided by quote-unquote, friendly foreign intelligence agencies without seeking corroboration. Specifically, it appears that the United States Intel analysts are accepting information from Ukraine and the United Kingdom as pure gold without realizing that it is fool's gold. And he correctly delves into the other problem, for example, intelligence services in the West have. And I strongly suggest you to go to Larry's uh, uh, site. I will leave the link below this video. And really read what he is uh, writing there, because it, this is how real intelligence professionals write things. And he notes there a very important fact. Who are you going to uh, recruit today, nowadays in Russia? If you think so, that you are recruiting somebody in uh, Russia of 1990s, uh, no, Russia is not of uh, Russia of 1990s. It is a very modern and fairly wealthy state, and people actually are looking with optimism at their future. And Mr. Putin is supported by overwhelming majority of Russians, and including their support for special military operation. How this could be then that United States and combined West continue to live in this absolute delusion? I can give you, uh, I wrote about many times and Larry speaks about it. The only way they can recruit and gain their info, obtain any kind of the intel 
quote unquote information is from people who will tell them what they want to hear and who those Russian people are. Well, for starters, many of them are not Russians at all. But secondly, the issue is that those are people with agenda. They want to sell as much crap to the West as possible because they want first to settle their accounts with their former country. And second, they want to make money doing so. And just to demonstrate to you how delusional the West is, and especially in terms of, of course, Russia's uh, intel, so to speak. Look at this. Here's another guy. I mean, I, you know what? I cannot even uh, uh, discuss this anymore without a uh, 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 smile. A total Russian collapse is surprisingly close, states Colonel Richard Kemp. I believe the guy is from the UK military. And look what he writes. He writes, as Moscow's latest offensive in Ukraine slowly but bloodily cranks up, the next phase is this ghastly war has well and truly arrived. Contrary to expectations, the Ukrainians are bravely, uh, bravely and successfully resisting the tens of thousands of fresh Russian recruits being thrown at them. Nevertheless, according to many Western observers, the chances of a total Russian collapse in the coming year are slim. I am less certain. We could be surprised. I don't know who this Colonel Richard Camp is, who writes in this shitty and sewer, which is called the British The Telegraph. But obviously the guy has been taking some chemical substances, which, you know, what probably are not even allowed in UK, uh, you know, or illegal at all. But here it is, you know, so Russia is now to, about to collapse. And then we go a little bit further from this uh, Colonel Camp, we go to today meeting of none other than uh, uh, Mrs. I believe she is Mrs. Uh, Christine uh, Wormuth, who is the U.S. Army Secretary. And if you read uh, about her biography, she is a classic swamp creature with the green political science who spent most of her life uh, working for the administrations of Obama and Biden. And not understanding what modern war is. Yet, today she uh, she was part of the conversation with the Center for Strategic <coughs> and International Studies, another funny think tank, tank which produces a copious amount of bullshit as intelligence and analysis. And while speaking about women, you know, in the uh, armed forces and in the politics, smart women, smart power, obviously, Christine... Uh, Wormuth is not very smart and she's not very powerful in the sense that she basically likes to use all those, you know, big words, strategy, domain, you know, uh, operational art and all things of this nature. But even she was speaking to one of other women of the CSIS, she, she admitted that, of course, yeah, Pentagon was not necessarily not counting for the Russian uh, real capability, which is, of course, bullshit. They miscalculated strategically, unprecedented miscalculations never seen in the world before. But she now states that, well, yeah, we know that Russians don't use their all, in fact, is use only a small portion of the uh, Russian air act assets, naval assets, and army assets, and so what can I say? Wow, something is happening. Something begins to dawn to, on those people, how they miscalculated, but I warned about it. And speaking about this fake gold, the fool's gold, I had to do this because I already made a, a video about this person, and her name is Rebecca Koffler. And I spent my hard-earned twelve ninety-nine yesterday, and I bought the whole book of her, which supposedly is very, you know, secret. Some things were blacked out and, you know, redacted from it. There were some pages, you know, not pages really, a couple of lines here and there, expecting to say, what is this Russian woman? She calls herself Russian. I don't think so. She is Russian, but that's another thing. But let's kind of uh, 
use her as an exhibit A and a really good example on why United States and its intelligence services live in this delusion and now they begin to change their narrative because evidently they miscalculated. Well, as I already stated, when you study Solzhenitsyn's history of Russia and when you know basically shit don't know shit from Shinola and you have the specialists like quote unquote like this Rebecca Kuffler let's see what uh, I gained after suffering through 380 pages of the bullshit concocted on the same level as Mr. Bismanov in its time was selling the open source uh, information as some kind of the intelligence valuable you know info so here it is we start with this, um, yeah, you remember this, right? Putin's playbook. Rebecca Koffler calls herself a um, uh, b- b- specialist in the Putin's uh, uh, playbook, which is basically primarily for 385 pages. She narrates all good old intelligence stories from the Soviet Union and Cold War. And here what she says about herself. And this is when I, I have to scratch my head. Look at this. Uh, she talks at about how important she was, which she was not really. I briefed you during my career with CIA director John Brennan, you know, uh, CIA <laughs> director Michael Flynn, Supreme Allied Commander Europe and head of the U.S. European Combatant, Combatant Command, General Free, uh, Philip Bredlove and General Robert Keller, the head of U.S. Strategic Command. So blah, 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 she briefed them. Okay, here's her biography. Having grown up in the USSR, I have first-hand experience of Russian-style totalitarian oppression. Unlike analysts who learned about Russia from textbooks without even sending food into the bear's lair or even speaking the language, I am familiar with the mindset, behavior, and motivation of Russian leaders. Well, she is not. In fact, she has no clue what she's talking about. But look at this. I am fully bilingual and I am a graduate of Moscow State Pedagogical in University and where I completed a study of English that began in the third grade. So the gal who is big time, you know, uh, um, intelligence specialist in Putin's playbook and for 385 pages she narrates their all known basic facts of the uh, basically Putin's playbook which are primarily taken from the bullshit sources such as American media and here is the issue which begins she she didn't even understand that uh, somebody can call her bullshit and here it is uh, just to demonstrate to you how this woman was clueless she doesn't work there anymore evidently she was thrown out due to some kind of bizarre occurrence on the plane and you know what but look at this if you uh, look uh, immediately at why this woman doesn't understand what she knows, uh, rather what uh, she claims to know, is the fact that uh, as a teacher uh, of English language in Russia, she never had any access to anything of value and she never held any kind of the uh, clearance there unlike me for example i'm not gonna lie i had the clearance form one what is form one clearance well form one clearance allows you to get not to the secret not to the top secret which is a secret now but also to the what is called особой важности level, which is special significance, which already deals with the things which can directly harm state, Russian state. At that time it was the Soviet state. And let me tell you guys, I've seen some documents of which, you know what, even today I kind of feel a little bit not comfortable talking about. This is what happens when you graduate uh, actually serious military academies. But let's go and take a look at what uh, Rebecca Koffler tries to sell as some kind of their, uh, of her um, uh, being privy to all kinds of uh, things in the Putin's playbook. Look at this. Uh, she talks about, obviously, 
a lot about military doctrine and military thought magazine of the Russian Academy of the Military Science. Those things are absolutely not secret. They are open source and the public domain documents, but obviously I always laugh when people with degree in English language uh, say that, as she said, that, oh gosh, I had the magazine Military Thought, because uh, they will not understand what is written there in about half of the cases, because it involves a lot of mathematics and a lot of modeling. And you remember from my previous videos how it looks like. But nevertheless, look what she states. Uh, she talks about also among these plans, she says, you know, like she knows about them, she saw those plans, was something that sounded unassuming, but it is actually menacing. A plan for strategic containment and conflict prevention. It is my professional assessment, read these words, it is my professional assessment that this plan, which is not publicly available, is a top secret, совершенно secret document and a critical piece of Russian anti-American strategy containing publicly unknown operational uh, concepts for future attacks on the U.S. homeland. Uh, you can immediately call a complete bullshit on that and that she has no idea what she is talking about for a simple reason. Because if she would have known Putin's playbook, let alone she was uh, has been privy to Bear's lair and how Prussian apparatus work, I, for example, know I served under the KGB auspices and, of course, I dealt with the counterintelligence officers because it was uh, basically part of the professional activity as pretty much for any officer who uh, served in the professional capacity and graduated from military academies and was what it called secret bearer. And obviously Rebecca Kotler never heard about it. And guess what? Because the reason it's all bullshit, because any operational plan, including operational level planning documents, let alone which obviously tie in to obviously strategic documents. It's not even совершенно secret, not even top secret. It is precisely the level of the особой важности, which is the special significance, which is way above top secret. And But evidently, Rebecca Koffler, providing her professional uh, uh, opinion on that uh, matter, didn't uh, understand what she was talking about because she had no clue. And there are other things, even higher uh, level of secrecy, but I never was uh, privy to them. But I, I worked with many documents which had the special significance of them, and they range from the weapon systems to, of course, operational plans. And the plan which she's describing cannot be top secret. It will be uh, classified on a higher level. The same as the what is called seasonal materials on the... Uh, for the communications and military communications operates on the what is called seasonal materials which is of course the codes and those are also special significance you burn them simple as that but she never knew that but well guess what here's the guy who knows and obviously i call her bullshit but this is not just the fa fact that the book is filled with these platitudes this open source BS, it, again, not just open source, It's we are talking about the public domain BS. And she continues to come up with all kinds of crap about uh, how she knows of which she doesn't. And look at this, she comes to the conclusion that many established experts will reject my recommendation because they don't fit into the binary mentality of bureaucrats which categorize Russia as either a friend or a foe. Well, uh, I don't know what kind of expert she was. Evidently, she had something to do with uh, uh, cyber security and something which didn't require any professional preparation and any serious education in the technological, military technological field, including such issues as uh, communications. But, but, yeah, I'm an expert, okay? I'm a much bigger expert than she is, despite the fact she, she uh, uh, briefed somebody. Who, uh, well, I don't know how Mr. Ben Hodges could be expert on anything. Evidently, the, the baloney he spreads and spews around with Russians being just basically defeated is absolutely, I mean, he discredits the, the 
basically name of the American officer. And there are, I know many American officers and intelligence professionals who are very decent people, very good humans, apart from being excellent professionals. And when you read it, this like, my gosh. And when you uh, look at this book, when you suffer through it, you begin to understand why they don't know anything. With this, experts like this, and Rebecca Koffler, for 385 p uh, pages, sells her as the expert in Russia, which she is not, not even close. She has no clue, actually, w how Russia runs, what what is Russian strategic thinking, because she never had access to any of it. And the fact that she learned something, I don't know what she attended. Uh, she attended some courses, probably on some Intel thing, just learning some whatever competing hypothesis methods and something of this nature she has no clue about russian armed forces she parades her as a complete bimbo and when you look at this it's just unbelievable yet these are precisely the people who create this illusion who as Larry says, do not want to even work to develop the base of knowledge and continue to repeat and parrot in this crap which is then being poured from MI6 which long ago turned into circus Russians op laughing at them. And the, uh, when you have also such Russian specialists as Rebecca Koffler or Mr. Bezmenov or Alexander Sajelitsyn and when you have those people there's no surprise they never understood the Russia's real capability Russia's real intentions because if they would they would have never gone and do this stupid thing they did with Ukraine in 2013 and they did it out of ignorance out of incompetence and lack of any serious education and professional skills which do require understanding of what balance of power is and the book of Rebecca Koffler is just another proof of this. And guess what? Public buys this shit. Public consumes it. They believe they are dealing with the professionals. While in reality, this is absolute madness. You, We are talking about amateurish level of people who actually in this particular case, speaking about Russia, they provide this Russian expertise, quote unquote, while in reality, indeed, the maximum what Rebecca Koffler could have accomplished in Russia would have been, I don't know, teacher of English. I don't think so anybody would hire her, apart from the fact that even she, when she speaks about Vladimir Putin, she again demonstrates, she again demonstrates a complete ignorance on what Vladimir Putin is when she begins to describe him. And she never mentions, while speaking about a, uh, what is called high KGB school, she does un didn't understand, which was known by the time her book came out in 2020 or something like that. So you can look it up. Vladimir Putin already at that time disclosed that he wasn't just the graduate of the high KGB. KGB school. He was the graduate of the famous, legendary Andropov Red Banner Institute. This is the school of the top-notch undercover intelligence officers. But this professional uh, specialist in Russia from the United States, from Kazakhstan actually, she had no clue about it. Uh, she should have watched at that time, uh, uh, you know, public Russian television where Vladimir Putin actually attends the uh, Red Banner uh, uh, Andropov Institute and he speaks on camera with those who taught him there that I'm a proud graduate of this intelligence facility. But you know what? This book, that it sells. And guess what? Only now they begin to understand in what deep shit, pardon my French, they find themselves because, of course, they never knew what they were getting themselves into. And that is why I use just Rebecca Koffler I, as an ex exhibit A. I can sit here and provide the non-stop list of the so-called Russian experts in the combined West, and I want to stress Russian studies field, and now Russian intel, so to speak, is a complete wasteland of the shysters who are selling things for gain, be them, I don't know, emotional gain to settle accounts, and as I already stated, to make money out of it. How you make money? You parrot things to those 
who want to hear what they want to hear. And the only thing they want to hear is, of course, that Russia is on the ropes. Well, basically today we know that Ukrainian uh, top brass already admitted that they are ready to withdraw from Bakhmut, which in reality, mm, too late, guys. And we can only imagine the, uh, I mean, the scale of slaughter of the armed forces of Ukraine there. And now suddenly most of the U.S. top notch or top big time conscious uh, talk about the fact that, uh, yeah, you know what, they cannot take Crimea. And the narrative is kind of changing and they, Bakhmut suddenly is not that important. Of course it is now. So this is what I wanted to tell you today, and um, as always, I want to express my profound gratitude to my wonderful uh, supporters, my wonderful patrons, and as always, guys, please support me on Patreon, or buy me a coffee or two, and subscribe to my channel, and I will be, we'll be talking to you later. Have a nice week. Bye-bye.